what's going on guys welcome back to this video today we're going to talk about a very recent vulnerability that was published on 3 october this month it was like seven days ago it is cve 2023-4911 this cve affects nearly all linux distributions and it is classified as heap buffer overflow vulnerability so basically all linux users need to update their systems immediately because this vulnerability nearly affects all distributions and it's a very dangerous one let's talk about this vulnerability so the first thing we're going to talk about guys is what it affects and how it affects the linux distributions the first thing as you can see it's buffer overflow vulnerability was discovered in gnuc libraries dynamic loader so this dynamic loader ld dot so this loader is responsible for providing the uh, required shared libraries for any executable when it is run on Linux. It is normally known as LD.so. The vulnerability poses guys a significant risk since it allows escalating the privileges of a logged on user and obtaining full control of the vulnerable machine. So this vulnerability allows any non-privileged user okay, to escalate from any user into root. Okay. Nearly on, as you can see, this is the page of Red Hat. As you can see, it affects, uh, so in this page here, let's scroll down and see what are the versions. So we successfully exploited this vulnerability and obtained full root privileges on the default installations of Fedora 37, 38, Ubuntu, and Debian. And other distributions are probably also vulnerable and exploitable as well. One notable exception is Alpine Linux. So nearly it affects all Linux distributions. When it comes to Red Hat, it affects, as you can see here, this vulnerability was introduced in GLPC version 2.34. Red Hat 8 ships glpc 2.28 which is not originally affected by this vulnerability however the commit that introduced this vulnerability was backported to rhgl 8.5 making this version an onward vulnerable so if you are using red hat 8.5 and onwards you have to update if you're using 8.4 and older you don't have to update so that's for Red Hat. Now, if you are using Fedora 37, 38, Ubuntu 22.04, 23.04, Debian 12, and 13, you have to update. Look, whatever Linux distribution you have, just update. Except Red Hat, make sure uh, to know what version you are in, because if you're using 8.4 and older, you don't have to update. So these are the affected Linux distributions by this vulnerability and as we said earlier it allows a local attacker meaning someone who has compromised a linux machine they allow it the vulnerability allows them to escalate from a local user into a root user so what are the prerequisites so what the attacker needs to achieve root uh, privileges on the vulnerable machine so this is a proof of concept here so what the attacker needs is an exploit code and a Python script. So obviously, guys, the Python script will generate a malicious loader, meaning we talked about this earlier. It will generate a malicious um, loader file. In this case, it's LD. So this is the original LD. So or the uh, loader that Linux distributions use to allocate the shared libraries for an executable to run. What you have to do you have to use the Python script to elevate, uh, to uh, create similar one, but malicious one, of course, and then compile the exploit code and execute on the vulnerable machine. All right, so let's go over the exploit code here. So we go to exploit C. So this is the exploit code. So if we go to line 41, here, the exploit creates different arrays, as you can see, which will be used later to store the glpc t or glpc to enables. 
So remember that the uh, so here in gene is delivered the dynamic loader while processing the glopc to enables environment variable. So this environment variable guys uh, is searched and processed whenever you execute any uh, binary on Linux. So and it is very related to the uh, loader here. So here we create many arrays because we want to use them later to store the glopc to enables environment variables and variable and trigger the buffer overflow in the glopc when the program is executed. Now other important parts of this exploit code is this part. So we have this variable filler. This variable is created to pad away the loader's read write section. It's filled with a long sequence of f characters. And then we have let's scroll down. We have filler 2 here. So the filler 2 is similar to filler 1 or filler. This variable is also used to pad away any extra portions. It's filled also with a sequence of f characters. Uh, let's see as well what other important variables we have. We have this. So dt underscore r path. This variable is used to craft a specific value to overwrite memory regions during the exploitation process. Okay, so this is the exploit code and some important parts uh, or important variables of the exploit. We have this, look at this, the kv. BOF size. This KV is the variable here is the payload that will trigger the buffer overflow, guys. It's filled with long sequence of A's. So these are necessary variables to perform the exploitation laid down in the exploit code. So here, this is the Python script used to generate the malicious library or the malicious loader. All right, so what do we need to do here? We need now to go and test this. So luckily for us, TryHackMe has a dedicated machine called Loni to Enables. This machine allows you to practice the uh, exploitation of this vulnerability. So once you connect with the vulnerable machine, as you can see, you have the exploit code and you have the Python script that will be used to generate the malicious loader. Okay, so what you have to do, you have first to generate the malicious loader. So basically, guys, uh, the malicious loader is not always LD.so. We have to uh, find what it is per machine, depending on the machine. So it's very safe to first find out what is the uh, loader for every binary. Okay, so remember, guys, that uh, this... Um, uh, uh, vulnerability here requires as you can see here this issue al could allow a local attacker to use maliciously crafted glopc to enables environment variables we talked about this in the exploit code when launching binary with suit permission to execute code with elevated privileges so it looks for binaries with suit permission and it executes the code with elevated privileges by generating malicious glopc to enables environment variables we explain them here these ones so now let's go back and generate the uh, shared or the malicious loader by the way you can find out the uh, loader used in any linux distribution for any binary using read elf so read elf let's say you want to find this for uh, user bin man binary dash p as you can see this is the loader that's the loader used to uh, uh, for this binary okay now if you go back to the exploit to the uh, python script so here this is the os linux architecture and this is the libc so this, the, as you can see, this is the loader defined in the uh, binary or in the exploit uh, script. And then we have the use shell craft to create the shell code. 
and that's it so you may change this according to the output you find so here is the same here's six here we have it for two depend it depends on the binary now we target binaries with suit permissions okay so let's now execute the python script and generate the malicious shared or the malicious loader so So PI enabled, as you can see, NX enabled. Most, most protections are enabled. So now we have to compile the exploit code, which we have here. So GCC-O exploit. And now we have the necessary files. We have the loader and we have the exploit code. Now we make sure that there are enough permissions to exploit, to, ex uh, to execute the exploit, and then we execute. Okay, let's analyze what happened. As you can see, we have try 100, try 200, 300, 400. So what is all, all that? So basically the exploit uses trial and error approach to account for the fact that the uh, uh, stacks location are changed every time. So as you can see, we have NX enabled and we have position and dependent executable enabled. So we explain these in the binary exploitation track from Hack the Box. So based on the fact that there are protections here, what's the, what's the exploit is doing, it is actually repeatedly running the program, forking and executing it, right? Until it gets a fixed address on the stack. That's why we have too many tries here. It is just looking for an address or a fixed address on the stack. And this, what happens here, this effectively manipulates the library search path to point to the directory named double quotes here. So if we check the exploit code back again, uh, look at this line. So basically the process for generating the forged lipso here, we talked about earlier, consists of copying lip6, so this one, but replacing the lip start main here. Where is this one? Yeah. With a custom shellcode we generate from here. 
that's what is happening guys and this in turn will execute bnsh so if you go back and see bnsh has been executed id and it is root previously it was no privilege so pwd ls okay look at this one this wasn't here before it is a directory that is named as double quotes so what is that so this is guys because we as I said earlier the exploit is executing again and again until it finds um, a fixed address on the stack this effectively manipulates the library search path we want to point the search path okay for the library we want it to point to the double co double quotes uh, directory here so that it finds the uh, library that we have generated instead of the original one we want to use the malicious library we generated okay which in turn will generate malicious glibc to enables that will in turn elevate the privileges from uh, no privilege into root so it's kind of for loop right until it finds the appropriate address on the stack which will search for this path and this path contains the shared malicious shared library we have just generated uh, okay so that's for the exploitation part now in the room here we require to find the root flag so let's find the root flag So that is the flag. All right. Now, if you go to this page here, if you want more details on how this works, you can read this page. There is analysis uh, of the full exploit code. And this is the proof of concept. Now, how to patch? You just have to update now for um uh, red hat i told you guys everything before 8.4 you don't have to update everything 8.5 and onwards you have to update and there is a mitigation explained here if you cannot update uh for red hat users okay guys so that was it i hope you enjoyed the video and i'm gonna see you later